Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at South Paul here in Brooklyn, New York. Performing vocalist Gordon Voidwell is turning the record industry upside down. His latest mixtape is really a combination of his love for 80s pop and retro, as well as futuristic sounds of hip hop. Tonight here at South Paul, he's performing selections off his mixtape CD. And what's very interesting about Gordon is that he's bringing a whole fresh voice to that retro period of the 80s, as well as bringing it to a whole new twist to a new audience. Tell me how this journey began. Oh man, uh, I guess the journey began with um, my parents, sort of musical parents and thinkers, thinking about a lot of things. They brought me into this world about 27 years ago, like a week ago, 27 years ago. Um, and both were musicians, they, they sort of hit me to a lot of different styles of music and different styles of life, like just cultural shit. And uh, I don't know, I think they, they, they birth named me William Gordon Johnson and uh, sort of assumed this like middle identity of myself, this sort of like in between first and last name part of myself, which was Gordon. And uh, the void well is sort of filling that void that also is between the beginning and end. And thus spoke Zarathustra. <laughs> you know, I, you take me back to a time in the 80s where I grew up in. The whole Prince, the Talking Heads, the whole Human League, mm -hmm. Thomas Dolby, and your music goes back to that period. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, it's actually interesting. This past week I got a chance to see uh, Africa Bambata DJ, um, and it was at like this art party in a basement. And I'm from the Bronx. I remember kids growing up with Zulu Nation pendants and, and you know being on the six train, and it was crazy. In the neighborhood I grew up in the Bronx, it was super hood, like a real hood neighborhood. But ultimately, those kids were on some like new wave and punk shit too. Like when I was a little kid, like seven years, so I'd be like seven or eight in the Bronx, seeing kids, black, Puerto Rican, white, Irish, Italian kids up by like Park Chester, Castle Hill area. And they were all kind of like hood kids who were on some new wave punk kind of stuff. Uh, and that was, to me, that was like my first introduction to sort of like, uh, cultural like sort of clash and being like whoa that's not what I see when I go to Harlem like this is a, ho a whole other unique thing that exists up in the Bronx and I, I think actually it's not totally unique to the Bronx but that that sort of like informed a lot of my like tastes just growing up and being like it's okay to like rap music and also like stuff that's not rap music and stuff that like makes me feel weird even you know what I mean like because I'd see kids with mohawks and like green hair you know and be like is that scary? Is that cool? What is that, you know? Um, but yeah, it definitely is. Africa Bambata was spinning all this, like, whoop, all this, like, Human League, Joy Division, like, Blondie, and it was ultimately still a dude from the Bronx just playing these dance cuts, you know what I mean? And, and there's a certain, like, universalism even that, like, I think watching him DJ, like, 
sort of like reminded me of. And I think that that's something that I'm trying to go for in my music as well. I've seen you perform a couple of times. Oh, okay. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, you played the Holiday Jam over at Wired. Right. And you you busted out with Heart of Glass. Right, right, right. And I was reluctant at first to get into it because I was like, okay, is this sacrilegious to really do right, a bloody right, right. <laughs> But right. you, your whole take on that right. is different. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I feel like Blondie is like the perfect example of like, that sort of hybrid in between space you know because she's well the, the band and and debbie too like they're they're ultimately creating sort of new wave or like rock music i mean it sounds like rock music their guitars the instrumentation is pretty standard but it's mixed in a really dancey way and the melodies are like very specific and can almost be like you know sort of psychedelic or like other <laughs> not just straight it's not just a straight take on rock um yeah, I, I feel like watching someone like her and then seeing her sort of interactions with like Fab Five Freddy and and just her her like obvious appreciation of rap music and black culture and black music because like there has to be that synchronization in order for anything to really speak to masses, you know? It can't ever be just this is pure rock, like this is pure rap. Like it has to be informed by everything else at the same time. Um, but the Blondie thing to me is just so cool because I realized I wrote a song sort of subconsciously that jacked the entire like chord structure of Heart of Glass. Like the changes are the exact same changes. It's a song called Bread. So we go from Blondie into Bread and it, it's like be, uh, seamless like because it just it just so happens. I mean and that's a it's a it's a like progression that you'll hear in so many different songs, you know. But um but yeah, I was I was happy that we got to do that, and I'm super happy every time I get to do it because I feel like I do a Gordon Voidwell version of Blondie every time I do it. You know, talk about the mixtape. This mixtape has been out for a while, and yeah. you haven't released your debut album yet, which right. is in the mix right now. Exactly. Yeah, the mixtape was sort of an amalgamation of stuff from. Well, it came out I think last October. Um, so October of 2009, and I'd been. It, some of it was stuff that I'd been working on, you know, three years prior, a beat here or a half-finished song there. All of it's totally original, and everything on it is played entirely by me. Um, but, but yeah, so it's like that was just sort of me being like, I should put something out so people know sort of how diverse the music that I'm making is, and also put something out that's free that people can just enjoy and pass around you know um and i was super happy with it it got a good response a lot of people downloaded it. i think a lot of people got hip to me based on it but the album that i'm working on now is is um i think it's a, it's going to be a little bit different obviously every song will probably be a little bit more like a fully completed song <laughs> um and i'm gonna i'm actually writing a lot more for guitar and bass um and less for synth i want the synth to sort of be like an afterthought but i mean it'll still be an electronic sound but i'm just I didn't do much guitar playing or bass playing on any of the mixtape songs really. So this is like a new challenge for me that uh, part of me is just wanting to expand on like the sound palette. Part of it is just me wanting to expand on my playing. <laughs> yeah. 
Another thing that your fans are very, very adamant about that you continue to do is your sense of fashion. Oh, yeah. You actually, and again, it goes back to what Blondie was doing, because Blondie did that. She mixed the whole new wave in fashion into the whole musical diaspora, and you're kind of doing that also. Yeah, I mean, for me, I'm, I don't think that I'm intentionally trying to do that as much as being like, when you're performing, you are presenting a visual aesthetic as well as a oral aesthetic, you know? So it's important for me, and I tell my band this too, like, it's important to actually think about what we're wearing and what we're presenting because it's a part of presenting the music, you know? It's actually just one central idea and that can sort of permeate to the music, to the way you're dressed, to the way you speak, to the way you comb your hair. Um, so yeah, it's like the, I don't, I don't even really think of it as being fashion per se, but I think that's how it's perceived. Um, but it's, it's just creating this sort of brand or this aesthetic that, that, that complements the music and complements something that's sort of like, more, more sort of even philosophical than just like a piece of clothing or like a, a synth sound or something. You know what I mean? That'll do it again for another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace Reporting live here in South Paul, here in Park Slope, Brooklyn. I'd like to personally thank Gordon for his time as well as the staff here at South Paul. As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember if it's in the groove, It'll make you move. Peace. I'm gonna take you to the